For this video, we're going to be discussing solving systems of equations by substitution. So in a previous video, we discussed how to solve a system by graphing. But there are other ways that we can do that, that we can solve a system, and one of them is by substitution. So substitution is just a method we can use to solve systems. And the way we do it is by solving one of our equations for one variable. Think like turning an equation into slope-intercept form. For example, we can say like, well, 2x plus 8y equals 16. If I solve for y, that means, well, 8y equals negative 2x plus 16 divided by 8y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 2. That's what we mean when we say solve one equation for one variable. I solved for y here. Now I could also say, well, then what we want to do is we want to substitute that variable back into the other equation. Meaning, I have this, so then I could say, well, 2x plus, we know 2x plus 8y equals 16. Well, that means 2x plus 8 times, we said y is negative 1 fourth x plus 2, well, fine. 8 times negative 1 fourth x plus 2 equals 16. Notice all I did is I said y equals this. That means this means the same thing as y. So I substitute. I plug that in here. So then 2x plus 8 times, well, let's see. 8 times negative 1 fourth is negative 2x, right? No. Yes, negative 2x. And then 8 times 2 is 16, so plus 16 equals 16. Cancel these out, we end up getting 16 equals 16. Which is kind of weird, but what you just need to notice is this what it means, this is what it means to substitute. I solve for one, and then I just plug it back into the other. All right, so our procedure is that we are going to solve for one variable in one equation, which I just showed you how to do. Substitute that variable into the other equation, which I just showed. Solve for the variable we have left, and then we're going to plug that variable back in to find the other one. This seems a little confusing, but once you see it in action, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. So we're going to solve this system right here using substitution. x plus y equals 12, and 2x plus 3y equals 31. Now it doesn't really make a difference if I solve for x or y, but I'm going to choose to solve for y in this one. You could solve for x, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to say x plus y equals 12. If I solve for y, all I do is subtract x. Alright, so now I know y equals 12 minus x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this right here, and I'm going to plug it into this other equation. So what I'm going to say is, well, I know 2x plus 3y equals 31. I just figured out that y equals 12 minus x. So I'm going to take this 12 minus x right here, and I'm going to plug it in for y. That's the substituting part. So I'm going to say, okay now, 2x plus 3 times 12 minus x, because I know y and 12 minus x mean the same thing, equals 31. Now I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to figure out what x equals. Distribute here, I get 2x plus 36 minus 3x equals 31. Solving for x, I figure out, well, combine our like terms, negative x plus 36 equals 31. Subtract 36 from both sides, negative x equals negative 5, so x equals positive 5. So all I did, I solved for my one variable, figured out y equals 12 minus x. I plugged that in so that I just have one variable to work with, I'm not trying to work with two. I solve for that one variable I know, and I figure out x equals 5. So now that I know that, now I know x is 5, well, figuring out y is easy. We just said y equals 12 minus x. We know x is 5, so y equals 12 minus 5, y equals 7. So right now I'm going to say my answer is 5, 7. But I really want to check my work. So to check my work, I'm going to take both my 5 and my 7, I'm going to plug it into both of these equations and see if it works. First off, 5 plus 7, well, that's 12. So it works for my top equation. Check. 
Good. Now let's check it on the bottom part. I'm going to plug in 5 for x and 7 for y. So I get 2 times 5 plus 3 times 7 equals 31. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 7 is 21. And 10 plus, t seven, or 10 plus 21 is 31. So it works for both of my equations. So my answer is the ordered pair 5, 7. I'm going to write it as an ordered pair. All right, so all we did, we solved for y in our first equation, plugged in that result for my second equation, used that to figure out what x was, then took x and plugged it back into my first equation to figure out what y is, and then I just checked my work, all right? If we think about this from graphing yesterday, wow, that's not even close to a straight line. If we think about this as graphing from the other day, well, whatever, we're going to pretend those are straight lines. If these two lines crossed, they would cross. These both have negative slopes. They would cross at this point, and that point is 5, 7. All right, so this is how we solve using substitution. Let's do one more example. All right, we solve this system using substitution. 7x plus 4y equals 18, and 6x minus 3y equals 9. So I want to solve one of these equations for one variable. And I'm going to choose to solve the bottom one here, and I'm going to solve for y. Okay, now you might be wondering, like, why is Mr. Harrington choosing to do that instead of the top one? Well, if I look, 6, 3, and 9. Those are all multiples of 3. So if I solve this one for y, I'm going to end up with all integer answers instead of up top here where I'm not going to end up with any integer answers. So I'm going to solve this for y. Okay, subtract 6x on both sides. I get negative 3y equals negative 6x plus 9. Divide by negative 3, I get y equals 2x minus 3. All right, so now I know that I'm going to take this 2x minus 3, I'm going to plug it in for y in this top equation. So I'm going to say, well, I know 4x plus y equals 18. I'm going to take this 2x minus 3. I know that's the same thing as y, so I'm going to plug it in. So 4 equals, or 7x plus 4 times 2x minus 3 equals 18. Now I'm going to solve to figure out what x is. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. I get 15x minus 12 equals 18. Add 12 on both sides, I get 15x equals 30. Divide by 15. Now I know x is 2. I'm going to take this 2, and it's going to get plugged back in here to figure out what y is. So I say y equals 2x minus 3 y equals 2 times 2 minus 3, which means y equals 1. So now I know i got to test this to make sure it works. I have x equals 2, y equals 1. So let's test it. If I plug it into my top equation, x is 2, so 7 times 2. y is 1, so 4 times 1. 7 times 2 is 14. 4 times 1 is 4. Add them together, and I get 18. All right? So now I should, I'm going to say my answer is the ordered pair, 2, 1. I should actually probably test it on this bottom one, too, to make sure. 6 times 2 minus 3 times 1. 6 times 2, that's 18. 3 times 1, that's 9. 18 minus 9 is 9. 9 equals 9. It works for both of my equations. So my answer is the ordered pair 2, 1. So all we're doing here, we are solving for y. Think of it as putting it in slope-intercept form. We're taking what we know y is, and we're plugging that in in our second equation, using that to figure out what x is, taking our x and plugging it back in to figure out what y is, and then checking our work to get the ordered pair to 1. All right, so your try-it problem for tonight is to use substitution and solve x minus y equals 3, 5x plus 2y equals 50. Find me an x and a y that is a so solution for both of those equations.